Mr. Speaker, an armistice was signed 62 years ago today to signify the official end of the Korean War. It was July 27, 1953. This first conflict of the Cold War occurred when communist North Korea invaded South Korea three years earlier. The defense of South Korea was supposedly a UN action, but as history shows, the United States, unprepared for this war, took the blunt of the fighting along with the South Koreans. In the end, the war resulted in a ceasefire until both sides could, quote, find a peaceful settlement. No settlement has ever occurred. This war has been referred to as the Forgotten War. It's barely mentioned in our textbooks. Over 50,000 Americans were killed. 1,700 of them were from Texas. 13 Texans went above and beyond the call of duty in Korea. They received the Congressional Medal of Honor for their valor. Ten of them were killed in combat. Major George Andrew Davis, Jr., United States Air Force. While flying his F-86 Sabre jet, he and his wingman attacked 12 MiGs to protect a squadron of U.S. bombers. After shooting down two MiGs, he continued the fight until he was killed. His actions resulted in the U.S. bombers successfully completing their mission. Staff Sergeant Ambroso Gulen, United States Marine Corps, was killed two days before the ceasefire. He turned an overwhelming enemy attack into a disorderly retreat while supervising the defense of his position, the treatment and evacuation of the wounded. First Class Jack Hansen, United States Army, while covering the withdrawal of his fellow soldiers, Hansen alone manned his machine gun to stop the enemy attack. He was later found surrounded by 22 of the enemy dead. His machine gun and pistol were empty, and his hand clutched his machete. Hospital Corpsman John E. Kilmer, United States Navy. In helping defend a vital hill position during assault, he bravely braved enemy fire to aid the wounded and he was killed while shielding a wounded Marine with his own body. Corporal Benito Martinez, electing to remain at his post during an attack, he inflicted numerous casualties against the enemy onslaught and refused to be rescued because of the danger involved to his other, other fellow troops. His stand enabled troops to attack and regain the terrain. He was in the United States Army. First Lieutenant Frank Mitchell, United States Marine Corps, led a hand-to-hand -hand struggle to repel the enemy, led a party to search for the wounded and single-handedly covered the withdrawal of his men before being shot. Private First Class Whit Moreland, United States Marine Corps. During an attempt to neutralize an enemy bunker, he covered an oncoming grenade with his own body. His sacrifice saved the lives of his fellow troops. Second Lieutenant George O'Brien, United States Marine Corps. While wounded during an attack against a hostile enemy, he refused to be evacuated and continued the assault. He set up a defense, aided the wounded, and covered the withdrawal so no one was left behind. Corporal Charles Pendleton, United States Army. He was mortally wounded by a mortar burst while heroically manning a machine gun and carbine during the multiple waves of enemy attacks. First Lieutenant James Stone, United States Army, led his troops in a last-ditch stand of a vital outpost. He exposed himself to enemy fire to direct his platoon, and when the final overwhelming assault swept over their position, Lieutenant Stone urged his men to continue the fight. Master Sergeant Travis Watkins, United States Army, led 30 of his men to surround the enemy. Though through his leadership, a small force of those 30 men destroyed 500 of the enemy before abandoning their position. Paralyzed Sergeant Walker, Watkins refused his evacuation as his condition would slow down his comrades. Corporal Victor Espinoza, United States Army. During an attack, he single-handedly destroyed an enemy machine gun, mortar position, two bunkers, and a tunnel, taking a heavy toll on the enemy with at least 14 dead and 11 others wounded. And Master Sergeant Mike Pena, United States Army. After ordering his men to fall back during a fierce attack, he manned a machine gun to cover their withdrawal. He single-handedly held back the enemy until the next morning when his position was overrun and he was killed. Mr. Speaker, 62 years later on this day, we remember the sacrifices of these Medal of Honor recipients and other Americans in the Forgotten War. The Korean Memorial down the street appropriately depicts 38 uniformed Americans moving silently in the brutal cold and rough terrain in some forgotten place in a forgotten war in Korea. Mr. Speaker, let us forget this unforgettable war no more. And that's just the way it is. I yield back.